If you listen to people talking about what's going to happen in the future with the advancement of technology, everybody kind of says the same things, right? Like they say that the machines are going to take over all the jobs, nobody's going to have a job except for maybe a few super geniuses who are the ones actually coding the algorithms for the machines, and then, you know, the corporate fat cats that own all the machines, but like 95% of the people are going to be out of work, everybody's going to be broke, nobody's going to have any money, and so, you know, the government has to step in and provide universal basic income. Basically, they have to provide welfare to everybody because nobody going to be able to survive otherwise. That's what a lot of people are saying, but I think that's wrong. I think these people that say this kind of thing are missing some of the balancing forces that are going to come into play. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what those balancing forces are, and I'm going to tell you what, in my view, is a more reasonable expectation for the future. Okay, now the first thing that everybody's failing to account for is that automation makes everything cheaper. If machines can do everything for a fraction of the cost of human labor, then all of a sudden, since production costs go down, uh, the actual price of goods goes down, right? Because companies have to compete, and if one company starts using automation and can lower its production costs, then it'll lower its price because then it will gain the market share, right? Everybody will want to buy that company's products, and so all the other companies are going to have to follow suit, or else nobody's going to want to buy their products. So the prices in general of, of stuff are going to go down. So since the price of everything is going to go down, that means that the cost of living is going to be a lot cheaper. People can live on a lot less money than they used to. That means that people can get by working lower salaries and working for fewer hours. Now, if you're paying attention, you probably noticed that I said that things are getting cheaper because production costs are going down, but what we're observing in the real world is that prices are actually going up. So I know that sounds kind of contradictory, but in real terms, the prices really are going down. The problem is that the value of the money is going down faster than the prices are going down, and that's entirely a function of the governments and central banks printing money. So let's let's use some simple numbers as a comparison. Generally, the inflation rate in the United States of America stays at around 3%. So everything is getting 3% more expensive per year. Well, at the same time, the real price of goods, that is the price of goods as they would be if the government was not debasing the currency, is let's say going down by 3% per year. Oh, that's not a real number. I just made that up. That number is probably impossible to know actually. But uh, just for the sake of simplicity, let's choose 3%. So you have 3% natural deflation, that's when prices get cheaper, right? In a free market economy where the government is not debasing the currency, prices get cheaper over time. So let's say it gets cheaper over time by 3%, and at the same time, the observed rise in prices, the inflation is 3% positive. What that means is that the government or the central bank is actually stealing 3% plus 3%. So the government or the central bank is just taking 6% of all the money. That's just taking it for themselves, and that's not even considering the cost of all the taxes and all the regulations that they put on the industries. So the cost of stuff really is getting lower, it's just that the cost of government is getting higher, and that's something that's going to have to change in the future. You're going to have to break down big government, and I think that is happening, although very slowly and painfully, but recent election results and the implosion of the government in Venezuela are, are slowly pushing people to realize that maybe big government taking care of everything was not such a great idea after all. So if prices drop and cost of living gets cheaper and cheaper, that means that menial labor gets cheaper and cheaper, right? Because people need less money to live on. Okay, now the next part is that valuable resources don't really go to waste, and human labor is a very valuable resource, and just because a job doesn't exist today doesn't mean that it won't exist tomorrow. People's desires are basically infinite, right? Over time, people are getting more and more and more stuff, right? Nobody's ever satisfied. So if there are a bunch of people hanging around that don't have anything to do, that want to work, then people that have money will find some way to pay those people to do something, right? They'll find something for them to do. So here's a silly example. In Tampa, where I come from, it costs like $60 to $80 to get a one-hour massage. Most people I know like massages. Uh, they would probably get more massages if they could afford them, but $60 to $80 an hour is kind of a lot of money, so they don't really buy that many massages. Well, if there's a whole bunch of people now that are out of work and they're willing to work for low wages because their cost of living is really low, and now let's say you can get a massage for $5, will you get more massages? Probably. So the amount of massages that people are buying is going up, just like anything else in the economy. If the price goes down, uh, you probably want to buy more of it. So a lot of services that are less accessible to people now may become more accessible in the future if there's mass layoffs, if there's a lot of people out of work, if people are willing to work for lower wages. So that'll fill in a lot of the gap. And also there's a lot of services that machines just can't really do. I mean, if a pipe breaks in your house and you have to call a plumber, uh, 
I don't think that it's anywhere in the near future that a machine is gonna come over to your house and fix your pipe, right? You can imagine how complicated it would be to have a machine that has to drive itself to your house and then walk up to your doorway, knock on your door, hand you a bill, then go find where the broken pipe is or listen to your explanation of where the broken pipe is and then cut through the wall and then uh, observe what size the pipe is and then, and then fix it with the right one, right? That's a very complicated task for a machine. I don't think we're anywhere near the point where a machine can do that. And even if a machine could do that, that would be the most expensive machine in the world. Now, that said, I think that the share of the functions that machines are going to take over is going to get bigger and bigger, especially in manufacturing and agriculture. But this is nothing new. This is what we've seen for the past like 200 years. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, this trend has been going that machines are taking over more and more and more of the traditional labor. But what we have not seen is mass unemployment. Factories have been laying off workers. Farms have been laying off workers. That's true. But the economy has always found somewhere to reintegrate those people. And actually, not only has overall employment not gone down, it's actually expanded. Because if you think about it, people are living longer lifespans now. They have longer working years. And then over the last 50 years, a lot more women have entered the workforce. So the workforce is expanding because the government and the corporations have managed to convince women to abandon their families and go enjoy a life of corporate servitude so they can drive the cost of labor down so the companies get cheaper labor and more of it. And then they can pay more taxes to the government. So now women are all working their life away in cubicles so they can be equal to men as if that's something to be desired. So we're actually seeing the opposite trend, right? As technology advances, uh, the number of jobs is actually growing. It's not getting smaller. And I think we'll continue to see more of the same trend. That is, jobs are being eliminated in manufacturing and in farming, and those jobs are being added instead to services. I think we'll see more and more jobs and services, more and more machines taking over in farming and manufacturing. Now, it is true that the machines are getting smarter and smarter, and their capabilities are expanding, and the amount of jobs that they can do is expanding all the time. But there are some natural limitations as to how far they can expand. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do me a big favor. Hit the thumbs up button so the YouTube algorithm likes me more. Hit the subscribe button if you want more content like this in the future. Hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. And share this video if you think your friends might think it's interesting too. Okay, now the big limitation for machines is that they have a cost associated with them as well, right? You have to pay for the machine up front and the machines are expensive. And then when the machine breaks or the machine needs maintenance, you gotta pay for a tech guy to come out and maintain the machine or fix the machine. And the more sophisticated these machines get, the more expensive it's gonna be to maintain them. Having automation, having a machine is not exactly free labor. I mean, even right now, there are a lot of businesses that would prefer to hire human workers than to hire a machine. So think about an ice cream shop, for example you're opening up a new ice cream shop and you can buy a machine that will do everything for you. It'll take the customer's order, it will make the ice cream and it will pop it out the other end and then the customer can take it from there. This machine already exists, I know, because I've seen it before. It's a big, fancy, complicated machine. Let's say it costs half a million dollars to buy this machine and then God only knows how much it costs to fix it when it breaks down because probably you could count on one hand the number of people in the country that are, that are qualified to fix this machine. So that's one option. You can pay half a million dollars up front and and then pray to God that it never breaks, but you're not paying labor costs. Or you can hire a teenager for $8 an hour to take orders and scoop ice cream. Which option is more attractive to you? So as the machines get more sophisticated, it also becomes more difficult to maintain and to fix them. And as it gets more difficult to maintain and fix them, the number of people who are actually have the brain capacity to be able to understand the machines well enough to maintain and fix them gets smaller and smaller and smaller. I mean, if you think about the most complicated machine in the world, it's called the human body. And the people who fix the human body when it breaks down are called doctors or surgeons. And those people are expensive, right? Not a lot of people in the world are capable of being doctors. They have to be exceptionally intelligent, they have to go through a lot of training, and they're very expensive. So the more complicated the machines get, the more the technicians that fix the machines will have to be smarter and smarter and smarter, and the, the smaller and smaller and smaller the percentage of the population that has the IQ that can deal with that kind of work is going to get. So the, the technicians are going to get more and more and more expensive. 
And so while the costs of the technicians are getting more and more expensive, uh, so the maintenance cost of the machines are getting more and more expensive, at the same time, the cost of labor is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper because the cost of living is going down and the, the machines are replacing some of the jobs. So there's, there's more competition in the labor market. So as the cost of uh, maintenance goes up, the cost of labor goes down and eventually they reach that balance where it actually becomes a better deal to pay for the labor rather than pay for the maintenance on the machines. Okay, now I know probably some of you guys are thinking, okay, well, what happens when they build machines that can fix the other machines? Well, the problem with that is then the machines that do the fixing, somebody needs to fix those machines. And those machines, since they're fixing other machines, they have to be a whole lot more complicated than the first machines. And then, I mean, you, this cycle could go on endlessly, right? Because you have machines that fix the machines, and then those have to be more complicated than the original machines. And then maybe you have a new set of machines that fix those machines, but those machines, that new set of machines has to be more complicated and you get infinitely, infinitely more complicated to the point where the, the human at the top of the chain that has to fix But let's say that I'm wrong about that and somehow the machines do develop the capability to fix each other and there's no human intervention needed anywhere. Even if that's the case, human interaction will still have value. People will always be willing to pay and even pay extra for personal service. We will always prefer a friendly receptionist to a computer. And the labor will be so dirt cheap that that receptionist will cost next to nothing for the companies. And up to this point, I've only been talking about the low IQ, unskilled workers. If you think about the more capable people, these will be the people that are writing the algorithms, that are building the machines, that are doing the maintenance on the machines, the people that are running the companies that own the machines. All of these people are gonna be making a ton of money due to the really high demand and they're not just gonna sit on their money people don't really do that I mean a lot of people especially poor people misunderstand this but Scrooge McDuck is a fictional character money is useless unless it's spent or invested so everybody that has money is either spending it or investing it they're not just sitting on stacks of cash they want to spend their money so they can actually get valuable stuff and they will be happy to pay for personalized service and the, that money will spread throughout society that's what people who have zero understanding of economics call trickle-down economics economics pejoratively and everybody else just calls economics or basic common sense. If you make a lot of money designing a robot, well that robot is making production costs cheaper which is lowering everybody's cost of living which is raising everybody's standard of living. And with some of that money that you make, you go buy a pizza or buy a massage or whatever, some of that money goes to the person who made the pizza or the person doing the massage, right? It really spreads throughout all of society. So anyway, all this trend towards automation, towards artificial intelligence, I just don't think it's going to be the cataclysm that everybody else seems to be expecting. If you found this video interesting, please do me a favor and let me know in the comments and I might just do a future video all about how you can position yourself to take advantage of these changes that are coming in the new economy. So if you want to catch that, of course, make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the bell icon. And as you may know, I think there's a big financial crash coming very, very soon. So if you want to find out how to be ready for that, how to be prepared so that you're not taken out and you're still abundant, even in a financially difficult time, check out this video.